All right, guys. So this will be the first one for unit one. So what is an e uh, we're looking at ecosystems, basically what they are, what they do, etc. All right. Let's start with the first thing. What is ecology? So you'll need the definition and the organization of the natural world. You'll see this all on page fifty-one. That's where we're going to start today. So ecology is the study of how organisms interact with one another and with their non-living environments. Okay. So. Basically, it's going to be how we're going to see this chart here. In this area, we see the organization of living things and how, they're, how they interact with one another. In this case, we're going to focus on this area here. In bio, I'm pretty sure you guys have all gone through this. So subatomic particles, atoms, to molecules, to protoplasm, to cells, to tissues, to organs, to organ systems. So we looked at that from micro to macro. And eventually it led up to some areas up here. In apes, we'll be looking at only this section and its interactions. So we're going to look at organisms, from organisms to populations, communities, ecosystems, and biosphere. As reference, I would suggest writing, the, writing down that flowchart either in your notes or on the sticky note above. So as a visual representation, you'll see here you got one deer. That's your organism. Here you got several deer. That, that'll be your population. Here you'll have your deer with your birds and a few other living things. These where you this will be your community. Your ecosystem again is going to be your living and non-living together. And then your biosphere is many ecosystems and how they interact in the world. So for your reference, I would make the sticky note. So you can create the graphic organizer or the flowchart for the systems, and you can put those in your notes, which you can put in your binder later. Or you can just um, rewrite this nice little flowchart over and over again so you guys can get it. Okay, the next one. So I need you to know the difference between an organism and a species. Just by reading these two paragraphs, you'll be able to figure it out. So literally, it's under organisms and speci species. All right, let's move on to the next thing. So I want you guys to have a basic concept of how our living world works or what's in it. So here is a basic pie chart of what is basically the most, the, the number of species in our world. So insects will beat us all out. Over 50% of this world is made up of only insect species. So, so far, this number is not correct. We have over um, a million species of insects now, or 800,000 uh, species of insects now that have been found. Um, Again, this book is from 2007, so it's a little outdated. All right, here you have other animals. So this will be like your mammals, your fish, your reptiles and amphibians, and your birds. You have your fungi, your prokaryotes. You guys should know what a prokaryote is now. Uh, your plants, and of course, your protists. So in this, for this one, I just want you to have a rough idea of what our world consists of and how this actually looks like. Uh, I also want you to know the importance of microbes, so in this case study right here, I just want you to read these, four, uh, these uh, few paragraphs and see why microbes are so important to our ecosystems, to each and every organism, and even us, okay? Um, they create, they are one of the most important parts of our environment, spe uh, especially on this earth, and just, uh, I want you to read over this and maybe you can do a uh, quick research on your own about microbes and humans and why they're so important all right so next is what is an ecosystem you guys did this on your skies learn and most of you got it right so i want to have to go over that i want you guys i do want you guys to look over these bold these bolded uh words and phrases so genetic diversity what's genetic diversity um habitat what's a habitat where can we see distribution in certain areas with a community and an ecosystem? I just want you to know the difference between some of these because we sometimes use it wrong. And of course, the bios here. Okay? Alright, so we end that at page 53 for the first unit. <coughs> and I just need you to supplement it with. Moving on to page 150, okay? 
cut 150, we're going to see basically the species interactions. So there's different, uh, there's different ways uh, different species interact with each other, be it for food or mating or space. So everything, all, all species are always need either specific food, specific, specific space, or they use specific mating rituals. So in this case, we're going to see a few of them. So of course, there's competition, okay? So competition is the fight for survival. So space, food, mates. Um, we are terrible, okay? Because we overindulge, in, especially in the space and the food uh, department, okay? Um, we do not know anything about scarcity or how to not encroach on, on certain spaces. Uh, basically we overrun the entire earth and don't care what's in the way so humans suck okay so you can look at here um, there are specific competitions so I need you to look into uh, interspecific competition and so interspecific competition and then other other types of uh, competition we'll be looking at through throughout these few pages. Okay, all right. So resource partitioning, resource partitioning. This is uh, species adapt to avoid competition over the same resource. So there's a lot of animals that do this. Um, basically, they try not to overlap or they don't they don't hunt in the same area just to avoid any conflict, um, or they'll look for a different type of um, food source. So in this case, I want you to look at these two graphs. This is a great way to see it. So species one is species two. So this is the number of individuals. And then this is the niche they overlap. And niche is just an area in which they occupy. So in order um, to avoid conflict, the species in this specific area will tend to move over or they become more specific in another resource as you see in this one okay so i want you guys to understand what's going on here and basically just write it out or draw it in your notes this would help a lot okay so we also have predator prey so predator prey is eat or be eaten and a good example is the wolf and the hare um i want you guys to know that this is basically a bell curve um, a bell curve for all kinds of species so when there's more wolves there's also there's always going to be less less hares if there's less hares then less wolves will eat and die out the less wolves then more hares will will, will be born and less will be hunted and again more wolves so this is a common cycle in predator and prey Okay, so a few of the things that I do want you to know is the specific interactions. So I do want you to look into the five basic interactions here. Um, and you will be reading throughout these few pages. So now we're on 151. Let's move over to 152. So ways to pray. So a few a few animals in predator prey have a few different mechanisms of hunting. And there's of course uh, the ambush. So camouflage. This is uh, mostly like jaguars, lions, um, crocodiles. They uh, use this so surprise attack. And then there's uh, pursuit and chase. Um, so wolves they usually they usually chase. Uh, or there's both. Um, cheetahs, they try to ambush, but they will chase if necessary. Alright? And then, prey do usually defend themselves, so I do need you to know a few of the defense mechanisms that they use. So, um, you have chemical warfare. So, chemical warfare, uh, some are poisonous, others are irritating, some are stinky, and others are bad tasting. So, these are some that you can look into. So, poisonous should be easy. So poisonous does not mean venomous. So poisonous means that if you stick it in your mouth, you will die. It doesn't mean that if it bites you, you will die. That would be venomous. So poisonous is if you stick it in your mouth, you will die. 
irritating so the um, whatever chemical that they have just not fun stinky well you know stink bugs and then bad tasting uh bitter tasting all right and then there's natural poisons that some of them use so cocaine yes cocaine is a natural poison caffeine peyote cyanide opium and rhodanone so these are all natural poisons that some plants may have so that's pretty cool um and then you have natural repellents so repellents just means that they don't like the smell or the taste so pepper yeah mustard nutmeg oregano cinnamon and mint um so those are pretty cool and then of course they have there's warning signs so you guys have all seen a poison dart frog which is kind of cool because you'll see some of them here so um some warning signs or some ways to defend themselves they'll be able to show them so poison dart frogs the really bright coloring basically says like um like don't eat me i might make you sick uh some of these same thing uh mimicry is actually kind of cool so you'll see like this caterpillar it makes itself like a like a snake um the this moth basically looks like the eyes of an owl and then camouflage of course all right so now we have parasitism so parasitism is the parasite lives off its host and, and the host is harmed okay um so i would want you to write two examples right uh in your notes or on a sticky note that way you understand what parasitism is um one thing that is cool if you want to go on youtube later um look at the 35 foot tapeworm so a uh, a man had to go into surgery because he had a 35 foot tapeworm um, attached to his intestines. So that'd be really cool to see in your parasitism. It is kind of gross, but it's still kind of cool. All right, then you have mutualism. So mutualism is when two species benefit from the interaction. So neither are harmed. The usual dynamic: one feeds and one protects. Okay. So you can read. Uh, you can read. You can read through here. Uh, here's a few examples. So you have the oxpeckers and the black rhinoceros. So the oxpeckers actually um, get rid of the ticks on their back. Um, Nemo and the anemone. Um, so clownfish and sea anemone. Then you have the mycorrhizal fungu fungus and juniper seedlings. So it, this is basically a fungus that helps with germination and root growth. So this is all mutualism. Uh, basically, they both help out each other, okay? All right, and then you got commensalism. So commensalism, one species benefits, but the other does, uh, like, doesn't harm it. So epiphytes, epiphytes are cool. Uh, there's plants that grow off trunks and trees for nutrients and sunlight. Um, so you'll see the, the example here with this one. So this is basically a plant that's just growing off the trunk. Um, but you can look at different kinds of of commensalism as well uh, so in Costa Rica we actually have big old trees called guanacastes that are the national tree and they have epiphytes uh, vines that grow off of them um, and then there's birds that basically make their nests off of those epiphytes so they're really cool all right guys so that'll be the first set of notes for this um, for this first unit uh, for this first lesson so any questions don't don't be afraid to email me or comment below all right have a good night